Yeah, um, welcome to the last day of uh, DevConf, and we will start with a talk by Mike Gabriel um, about X2Go, a terminal server um, architecture, and yeah, enjoy. Yeah, welcome. My name is Mike Gabriel. I am a member of uh, Upstream X2Go and also a Devon developer, which has been quite recent, actually, in March. So what I would like to... Thanks, Andreas. So what I would like to talk about is a, an approach for a remote desktop solution that is not yet available in Debian and also has some difficulties to enter Debian at all because there's one component that is not... Well, it's, it's, it's a component that's hard to chew on in the security team. Um, so what I do first, it's actually, it has been announced as a talk, but I would like to have it more as a bot. So maybe people want to come a bit further so we can discuss about things. I have a lot of questions uh, for the people in the room. So um, yeah, it's, it's rather a bot actually. So um, I have some notes on the Gobi. And here it is. So if you um, want to share notes on DevConf 13, BOF, and then um, X to go. So how many of you use some sort of remote desktop solution, like VNC, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay. How many would need a better or, a, well, a remote desktop solution at all or a better one? Okay, right, right, right. So quite a few, actually. So ca may I ask what you use, actually? Who, or how many use VNC? One, two, three, okay. How many use SSH minus capital X? One, two, three, four, five. Works well on the one connections, doesn't it? Pretty well, okay. Well, not so well, actually. Uh, how many of you use Expra? Yay! Okay. Okay, it works a bit better if you if you have a weak connection or if you have high latency on the network that we work on, doesn't it? I use it on fiber. So <laughs> oh, fiber. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't really matter actually. Okay, right. Um, <laughs> uh, we need a microphone for that guy. Thank you. You get a microphone. <laughs> It. Oh, well, I'm not upstream expert, so, so I don't know. I have tried it a couple of times because we are seeking for alternatives for our core functionality, but well, I wasn't so convinced about Expra. It, it works fine for the seamless desktop integration of, of Windows, but it's for full desktop solutions in full screen, it's not, it's yeah, not designed it for it. It breaks sometimes. That's okay, the reason so who it. uses free RDP as a server on Linux machines? So providing Linux desktops via free RDP, free RDP server, no one, okay. Who has to access Windows desktops using RDP? Dong, 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 quite a few, okay, right. Yeah, so that gives us quite an overview, actually. And how many of you are content with the solution you have? Okay, Keith, <laughs> right, good. Ah, <laughs> cool, okay. So yeah, so what is X2Go? X2Go is actually a bundle of packages. We call it X2Go components. Um, well, three of them are client-side, but they, they are exchangeable. So it's X2Go client, and two tool, tools that I've written, um, they're called PyHoka. Py, because they have been written in Python, and Foca, because the seal is the logo or the mascot of, of X2Go. And Foker in Latin is the seal. So that's PyHoka, and there's a GUI one, which is what looks like the network manager applet, actually, you have in, in GNOME or KDE or so. Uh, so you have, um, you have a tiny icon on the right top of your screen, or on the bottom, wherever you have that, the, the system tray area, or the indicator applet area, and, um, and from there you can control multi-sessions to multi-servers. The, X2, the native X2Go client application you have seen while I was logging in 
It has originally, originally been designed as a thin client logon manager, but you can also use it as a normal client application. The disadvantage of the current X2Go client is that you only can launch one session to one server per X2Go client instances. So if you, well, if you have to hop on from one server to the other, or you have several servers and you want to open them at once, you need loads of X2Go client applications started, and each of them can connect to one server, but it's a bit awkward. So that's why I designed the uh, PyHoker uh, GUI application, actually. So the advantages of X2Go compared to other solutions uh, are, or is actually, it really uh, scales quite well over WAN connections. My primary use case was system administration. So yes, SSH works for everyone, but um, we serve schools. I'm part of the Debian Edu team as well. So we support schools and we have content filtering on the, on the firewalls, so, and loads of requests are, well, I can't open this on that page. Can you check? And then I need a browser, browser inside that school to check how the browser behaves within that infrastructure. So I need some graphical thing. Most schools are behind the DSL uplink, and that was till last summer we had only 2,048 kilobit per second uplink, down, oh, um, downstream. Upstream it was even much slower. With X2Go, you can administrate those schools, those places graphically. Um, so the, the features, the built-in features of X2Go are also client-side <coughs> printing support. So I can print something in the terminal server session and it comes out of my printer at my desk. Um, we have um, the possibility of sharing client-side folders or devices. So in thin client mode, you can plug in a USB stick, USB flash drive, and appears as a desktop icon in your session. Depending on the desktop you use, sometimes it's not an icon, but anyway. Then there is a possibility with the native X2Go client to have uh, GNU, GP, uh, GNU PG smart card authentic authentication, which is you have your SSH key on the smart card, you have to unlock it via um, a GNU PG key, and then this key, this SSH key on the smart card is used for authentication. So you can have a, a setup where people have a card uh, and shove it into a device, and whoop, the session is on screen. Um, then, um, Quite recently, we published to the, to the public, we published a, a broker. So that is a service that, an HTTP service somewhere on the network. And this serves the X2Go client with configuration setups, depending on the user who's sitting in front of the screen. Um, so session brokerage is quite an issue in Microsoft uh, terminal server-based networks, and that can be sort of imitated in X2Go as well load balancing, having multi-server sites, stuff like that. So then, as some of you, those who have come early might have seen, uh, I booted my very old EPC over the network. So I'm working inside of an X2Go go session. So as you can see, I can scroll here. Um, I could even open uh, Mozilla Firefox and the Flash video inside it, like a YouTube video, it would stutter a little bit, but not too much, actually. Can do that later, maybe. Um, so we have this thin client environment that, I, that needs some more fixes, and then actually I plan to bring that to Debian as well. So the client side is, is pretty fine concerning Debian, Debian policy. And um, what we also have is we have bindings for several desktops. Bindings means like you mount a folder into the session and then there appears a desktop icon. Or binding means, in this case, if I go to a system in the Mati desktop, and then I can suspend my X2Go session, which I will actually do now. Boom, gone. So, well, now I'm in some sort of a company, and I change my office, go to a meeting room or wherever, there's a terminal, and I have the same setup there. I click, and I can resume my earlier session. There I am, actually. Okay, we have Pulse Audio support in it, so um, I can play sound 
on the thin client, just, just like a normal thin client you would expect from it. Um, so I get the sound from that's the server over the network, pulls audio directly onto my machine. Everything in X2Go is designed to work over one SSH connection. So how many of you know free NX, NX server, no machine? Right, okay. So how many of you have found the public key there? Okay, the NX client ships a public key that works with every NX server. So the handshake in the session in NX, in free, free NX server is do one authentication as user NX with a pre-shared public key and then do the rest of the handshake, of the session handshake as the user ID that actually wants to connect. And X2Go, we got rid of that completely. So, the, um, so what, what, what happens is that you do a normal SSH login and then some port forwarding and reverse port forwarding tunnels um, get set up. And through those tunnels, SSH FS goes through for the file system, for the printing support, pulls audio streams, and, uh, and the graphical stream goes through that. How that works, I'll explain a little bit later, actually. Um, so what use cases can we have? Well, one use case probably is you have a home box, you have IPv6 at home, or uh, dynamic DNS, something like that. And you can access, and then you forward the SSH port to one machine on your local network, and you can work on your home box. So you can work on your, with the environment you have at home, you can work on the data you have at home. So that's quite handy for many people, actually. Then I have a customer in Denmark called Fleetnet, and they serve, they are canonical partners, and they serve several schools and municipalities with remote desktops where I to go, and they use Unity in 12.04. Um, one of the limitations is that 12.04 was the last Unity version that can be used with X2Go. Yes? One small question. What is uh, about um, using different uh, so, uh, resolutions in the, in the screen you have at home and, and your laptop and so on? Is it automatically scaled or what is used to, uh, to use different uh, resolutions? Resolutions. Uh, the resolution is, you mean like pixels on screen? Yes, correct. Okay, the resolution is always, it's, it's always the one you select. So you can use a full screen mode like I have now here. You can use a desktop se session locked into a window. You can, you can have seamless applications. Seamless application would be, uh, for example, with the Pahoka application, with the GUI application, you you get a start menu, an application menu, like you use from your local desktop, but with the applications on the remote server, and even with the icons those application have, applications have on the remote server. So, um, the, so what you're probably asking is, how is the compression um, adapted to the connection I have? No, uh, I mean, at home I have uh, 16,000 to 1,200 uh, resolution. On my laptop I have 1,024. Oh, right, I and, see. And uh, I, I have to, uh, uh, it has to be managed to, uh, to get, uh, get rid of these differences uh, because of the window manager and so okay, on. Okay, right, so I get on it. And yep. uh, some windows manager has to restart and so on. Yeah, okay, so, so the how x to go works, I, I come to that a little bit later. Um, but basically, you don't access the session you see on the monitor at home. So you don't act, it's, it's a possibility you can do that. It's an option or a feature. But normally, you, you would just start your computer, don't log in, go to work, and then start a remote session on your computer with the resolution your laptop provides. Yeah, okay. And when you change from one laptop to the next laptop, and the next laptop is an EPC or is a tiny netbook PC, and the other one was just a, like 1,600 times 900 pixels, then the sessions, most of the sessions supports rescaling. So it was on the large, large screen before, it will be on the EPC and it will fit. Yeah. Okay, so um, then there is a nice project with, this, with the same customer. It's called the Samsung project. And so what, what people tend to ask is, well, why do I have to remote, uh, why have to use remote desktop solutions? In Linux, I can use like live systems, I can use distance workstations on a network. They scale much better in multimedia. 
Um, but what one use case is th th that's really nice in the Samsung project because they provide servers for students in Norway, for schools in Norway, and when these students go home or go to bed, then in Myanmar the servers are used. So they provide, and the provision of the servers in Norway are free for the people in Myanmar. So it's an it's a um, it's a project for supporting for supporting that country actually. Um, we also use it as a drop-in replacement for LTSP and Debian Edu de deployments. LTSP is the Linux terminal server project, which works well, but only on the local network. Um, and I, I also know from a customer who uses, they, they have a huge call center, loads of call center agents, like several hundreds, and they use a cluster, an extra Go cluster for provisioning of um, the, the desktops that those people work at. Um, and I have a customer in the Netherlands as well who uses it as a software as a service. So he just projects one application that is hosted on Linux servers onto Windows desktops <coughs> with that approach. So yeah, um, so that was X2Go upstream. And now it's gonna be about X2Go and Debian. So X2Go is partially in Debian already. That is only the client side. Um, we have the X2Go client is in Wheezy already, and the Python clients are in, um, in Unstable and have also already entered Ubuntu. Um, <coughs> and I plan to bring the uh, thin client environment into Debian as well. But that's all client side. Um, the issue about the server side components I will come to in a very second, and maybe some here in the room know actually. Um, what they are about. If s I see that someone is editing in Gobi, could you do me a favor and look up the uh, bug number for NX lips? The one with the long thread. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so w basically what you have to do um, to, to, to get an insight into X2Go before it enters Debian is you have to add uh, our archive, our packaging archive, and um, so, so the URL is, is, is here on the screen. And on the server, you need to install two packages. Uh, I recommend those two. Um, yeah? Well, I don't know if I can that. Preferences, is it there? Okay, thanks. But, oh yeah, here, okay, right, I see. Oh. The down, huh? left, oh yeah. Okay, fine. Thanks. Ah, yeah, yeah. thank yeah, you. Yeah, cool, okay, thank you. Good point. Um, so on the server, you just install X2Go server X session and X2Go server printing, and then most of the uh, X2Go server works. Actually, there's another one that's quite nice because it does some jet general XD, uh, XDG desktop binding, so that's this one. I uh, know it jumps, but let's do it this way, boop. Okay, here we go. Um, and on the client, you either need X2Go client or the Pahoka client. <coughs> um, so, and then, once you've done that, you can, and if you have a user that can access the X2Go server via SSH, then he can access it via X2Go. And then you can get a graphical desktop. So, but we have challenges, and that's actually the reason why I'm here. Um, so the one challenge is, well, no, the, the, basically the challenge is that the technology for getting the image onto the clients is old um, and works with desktop shells and applications that do, that use the old-fashioned X11 protocol. So um, whenever it comes to that the applications use a new widget library and a lot of rendering is already happening in the application itself, then loads of bitmaps fly over the wire. 
and these bitmaps, this, this is not, it doesn't scale as well as it would be just the X rendering commands so that the rendering happens on the, on the client side machine actually. So that's, but that's feasible. It, it's not, um, the, it's, it still scales well actually. But the, the real issue we have is that the NX um, backend we use. So we use stuff from no machine that is free, that is GPL2. Um, but that's like years ago, uh, like years old, and it, um, it is not so well maintained by no machine. To fill that gap, we decided, we as um, another DD actually, is Reinhard Tartler, it's Um So what we, what we did is we did a redistribution of NX libs. And this uh, NX libs redistributed is already upstream, or is becoming upstream for Fedora at the moment. And um, there have been communication with Canonical and they are interested in having that in Ubuntu as well. So, and what we do there is we have a very complex Giddy, kilt based workflow that allows you to see what No Machine originally did to the sources. And when they upgrade some of the tarballs that one of the components, we can merge that in and still have our patches separate from, from what No Machine does. And then we, we, well, we run loads of patches over it. Um, some of them are bug fixes, build fixes, feature add-ons, stuff like that. But it's still very old code. Very old, I mean it's xorg 6.9 with many, many security issues, patches missing. So what I am actually currently looking for is an alternative to that. So, and, and this is the part where I need your help, where I need your ideas. Um, and um, so, so one, one idea is there is a free RDP backend for Wayland, for Western. So that would serve the purpose of having a full desktop as a remote session. In Western you can have a complete desktop but you cannot have seamless applications as far as I know. Not yet at the moment. Then there also is the idea of getting Sapphire, uh, uh, using Sapphire so that at least on local networks uh, the setup works. You won't be able to, to, to work over one connection. But the, the idea is to find a way to get the X to go server components into Debian uh, and um, yeah, move, well, avoiding working around the annex code. So who of you, ha who of you have tried? How many of you have tried X to go actually already? I saw Thomas, yeah, okay, okay. So, um, who, how many of you have, have sort of played with the thought of, well, what terminal ser server solutions, what remote desktop solution can there be? Mm, yes, okay. So what were conclusions, Gerd? Uh, I, was in doubt to raise my hand from who is playing with um, remote desktop uh, solutions. I'm from the age of uh, uh, Telnet SSH. A colleague of mine, uh, 20, 25 years younger than me, he has installed X uh, RDP on his server that is in the cloud. And for web browsers, things he has a much better performance than when I uh, go with SSH uh, with X forwarding mm -hmm. to the same machine. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm have been playing with desktops, and think I found a new candidate called uh, X to go. Okay. Um, I'll suspend the session for an hour while we talk and launch a local desktop on my computer and then I show you the other client that we have. So we continue the discussion and while that, um, my system here will reboot. Yeah, actually I've, pl I've played with many of those and at the end, if I have a, 
well, a non-GNOME 3 based desktop, let's say that. As long as I have that, it works quite well. But the future of, well, of, well GNOME is really, is really out of choice, GNOME 3 at the moment, because it does not work and it won't work with 3.8. Because they, as far as I know, they removed the pullback session stuff in GNOME 3 for 3.8, but Keith might know better. You don't know, okay. So, and, um, oh. Oh, you have been at the conference, so I thought you might know. Uh, yeah, I was at Aquatic last week, and um, I know that the, the while they're trying to remove the fallback session stuff, they are providing a more classic desktop still using GNOME Shell. Okay. And I, I suspect the rendering performance of that is going to be similar, unfortunately, to the to other GNOME Shell stuff. Yeah. Um, fortunately, there are a lot of other desktop choices other than GNOME, and yes. I... Uh, and in fact, GNOME at this point is is the minority desktop in the Debian environment. Yeah. Um, XFCE is definitely a more popular desktop yeah. environment. So what I've also started working on is the Marty desktop, the packaging team. So uh, and that's the one you saw actually on the screen. It wasn't a GNOME 2, it was Marty, and and that one works really really well in Xgo as well. So yeah, the GTK 2 based desktops work really fine, like LXDE, like XFCE, Marty. Um, probably ISVM and stuff like that as well. Um, KDE still works until it's still, uh, uh, st uh, while it's still on Qt4. It, I think in Qt5 they will remove the native session support. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um, so the other screencasting technology that we're looking at in other environments is to move away from a remote graphics, a remote rendering uh, uh, protocol and moving to uh, remote video transmission. Um, one of the uh, so using something like MPEG4 or H.264 to transmit yes. the contents of the screen, um, which provides uh, po provides a scalable scalable bandwidth option, um, so that when things change quickly, you get blur, you get a lot of artifacts on the screen, and then when you have more time, you can catch up yeah. and re and fill in at a lower resolution. Um, yeah. I don't know how viable that is, but it certainly is certainly provides a solution for. Uh, 3D, 2D, modern desktops, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. and one of the advantages there is we can take advantage of the server um, uh, compression hardware to do the video compression in the server. Yeah. So we we have quite quite some plans around that actually. Um, I have looked at the X624 encoding thing in Xpra, and it works well if the latency on the network is is fine. But if that goes down then it's, well, it's like watching an AVI over a stream. If you have these clusters in the image that, that take some time to, to rebuild and stuff like that. Um, and you also have, um, so in terms of usability, in X2Go, the mouse always moves, even if the network goes down. Because the mouse pointer is local. In a streamed environment, you're watching a movie, so the mouse is in the movie. So if, if the network sort of, there's a hiccup or something, then the mouse stops, stuff like that. So it's, uh, the usability is, is, is less. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying for the video transmission, but uh, adding to that the ability to do local mouse echoing to matter yeah. definitely improves that. The question is whether we can take advantage of any local rendering at all, given what modern desktops are going to. Yeah. And Mm. Certainly, certainly doing uh, H.264 or some other video encoding over the wire would make sure you could capture any desktop environment. Mm. And then adding to that things like the local, local mouse echoing and, um, and all, of the other, all of the other services would provide a similar environment. I don't know what the bandwidth requirements would be. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about going to either something like X2Go or uh, video encoding is that it's fairly latency and uh, in, in insensitive, and our network bandwidths are improving much faster than our latency is improving. In fact, latency is getting worse in most environments. Um, so the question is whether um, a video environment with, with would be adequate over a high latency, um, high bandwidth network. Mm -hmm. So that that um, I I did a bunch of research um, in around in the early two thousands about uh, network effects on the X window system. Uh, and we built a synthetic network to, that would allow, allow us to uh, adjust the uh, latency and bandwidth independently in the lab. Yeah. And that way you could actually see how the, how the remote X, uh, X session in this case worked over a higher latency 
or a lower bandwidth network and adjust those parameters independently in the lab so you wouldn't have to go around the world looking for a specific network yeah. characteristics. Yeah. In, in Exago, latency is a greater issue than bandwidth. Bandwidth can be really, really small. If the latency is like over 100 milliseconds, then it, it becomes sluggy. Yep. So, um, yeah, there's, there's another idea, but it's just, it's a question of manpower or financial power, actually, is that someone, well, we have one developer on the team who could do that, uh, that is rebase. He changes that no machine did in X or 6.1, and rebase that against the latest XORG. But that would need big cooperation between the XORG team on free desktop org and the Exago team, actually, because that should then really, really go upstream. And at one point, then, even be maintained there with, the, with our support, of course, but, but changes in the XORG. What's the licensing on that code? Um, there is the compression libraries um, in an XRGPL. GPL 2 without the plus. That's fine. And there was a license change in XORG as well that actually should now make it possible to use the decompression libraries with XORG. Well, but that has to be investigated again more thoroughly by yeah, someone who really knows about license. My, my question is what are the, what, what's the license to the X server integrated changes, not the external components? It's also GPL 2, I think. Yeah, it so maintain, uh, the, the problem with that is that I can't maintain GPLv2 patches inside the X server code without changing the license of the X server. Okay, okay, okay. And that's always been the problem. And I w while I would love to change the X server GPLv2, um, it is MIT licensed at this point. Yes. Um, yeah, so, ooh, so rebasing would become a rewrite then. No, I mean, you're welcome to rebase because you, you, can, you can ship an X server that's GPLv2 with the NX patches. The problem oh, is so I can't but maintain those But it won't, it won't be XORG then? I, I can't maintain those upstream. I can't ship that as the core okay, X server. Right. Yeah, but that's, that's what happened like five years ago, six years ago. So that would be nice for, well, for, for now. But then in terms of sustainability, it won't work at all. Right. Yeah, because we have that situation now. Uh, we right. have a fork that is so old and so insecure um, without anyone noticing, actually. But um, th th there, it would reproduce a problem in five years. Right, so the, the realistic solution there, if you want to maintain patches in the X server tree, is to, is to construct something which is MIT licensed, either as interface changes into an external library so that you could move the existing NX code into an external library and maintain that separately, or is rewriting appropriate sections that are necessary inside the X server. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but still it's, it's nothing one can do at the weekends. Probably not, I don't, Probably I, I've not. never looked at the NX patches, I don't know how extensive they yeah. are. Yeah, okay. Any other comments so far? Questions? No, okay. So, so what I want, want, to, uh, want to show you now is the uh, the other client, so well, uh, the Exago client is it lo just looks like the login screen on. Um, oh, this is so dark. Jip, 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 yeah. So that's it, I'm on awesome. So don't, I don't have window decorations. So that's the Exago client. You have a uh, session cards here. You can click on one of those, and then you can log on to one server. Um, and I much prefer this one if I have a multiple server set up. So I can group my, uh, my, my, my sessions, my pre-configured sessions, and I can configure those with a right-click button on this. Let's see, I take my notebook here, for example. And then I have loads of parameters that I can configure. Uh, I can, for example, if I'm a w in a window desktop mode, I can configure the session title. So if I have loads of different windows, they can bear the name of the session I'm currently in. So that helps quite a bit, actually. Especially if they all look like a Debian Edu desktop. Then it's really getting confusing. Um, you have several session types that you can um, connect to. Um, so we tested Trinity, actually, as well. We, there is a, an RDP proxy via x to go So it means you have a gateway that runs an x to go server and you have RDP servers behind that gateway. 
and you use the NX compression, access this gateway, and have a local RDP connection on, your net, on, the, on the intranet of a remote site. Um, then you can launch single applications, and you can also do something like Citrix does. It's called publish applications. I can show that in a minute, actually. Um, then you can play with the connection. You have SSH, uh, SSH agent forwarding support. Oh, it's, it's German, actually, I just realized. So what you can do is you do SSH minus add, log on to one session, and you can reuse your local key in that session to hop onto other servers on that remote network site. Um, you can use a, an SSH proxy on the way. So, Keith, <laughs> it's fun looking your face while doing this here. <laughs> um, so that means um, if, you have, if you have some site and you have a gateway on that site and you have X2Go servers behind that gateway, not RDP now, then you can jump to this gateway via SSH, set up a tunnel that goes through the gateway to the target server, and then start a remote session there. And there is actually, in the, in the native X2Go client, the blue one, there is also a patch in it that does that, does that via HTTP. It hasn't been tested because the, that well because the libssh patch that is required for that is not yet stable, but it's coming. So what else do we have? Then you can um, play with the connection speed and latency you have. You can do something with the compression, but the default is just fine. And then you can, well, you can tell the application, do you want a full screen? Do I want a maximized window with a desktop session inside? Or do I want to have a custom window, custom size? The native x go client already has Xenorama support. So you can have like three screens and either let the sessions pop on, on one specific screen or have um, used the, all the th these three screens for one session. And then inside the session, the windows know where the one monitor ends and where the next one begins. So that's quite nice. Then you can, um, you can have auto configuration of the server side keyboard. So the client side keyboard gets recognized on the client or is configured on the client pretty well. And that one appears pre configured in the session. So you can be sure that your local keyboard mostly works. Unless you have a Mac, then it doesn't work. Um, so we have Pulse Audio support. We used to have Art support when that was still alive. And um, you can optionally switch to ESD support, but I don't ever do that because ESD is normally emulated via Pulse Audio, so why? And then you can connect um, client-side folders, and that can be configured like do connect them when the session starts, um, but I can also connect folders whenever I need them on demand. So I go back to the Gobby. <clears throat> Yay. Are there any more questions at the moment? Okay. Um, criticisms. Is there anything that's in your mind that's sort of, well, this old code or whatever? One discussion we had in the ITP, um, we will look it up in a minute when, has somebody entered it into the Gobi text? Yes, I see that, okay, right. Um, so I, re I resume the key, the session that I had earlier. Um, uh, so, so in terms of getting x to go more known, um, which will be then maybe uh, a means to get the manpower issue fixed or get it improved. Well, we have that in Debian everywhere, that manpower is always an issue. But in x to go especially, it, it is that it is mostly known in Germany, sometimes in some countries in Europe, and there are quite a few people on the mailing list from the US, from Russia. But it's in, in, in Germany, it is, it is an issue. So, so we have the Linux magazine, and there are articles in that one. But what is needed more is that it gets more, more known internationally so that we get more input from, from other people, actually. So, and then this would be, this is one reason why I really would like to see that in Debian. Um, but for that, we have this annex issue at the moment. 
Okay, there's the bug number. So if you have some time this afternoon, try to go through it. It takes an hour or so to read it. And it, it actually also contains a history of why NX is a fork, what happened like when the Italian company No Machine started working on, on NX, what happened then. Um, it also contains um, all, the, all the criticisms in terms of security, why NX cannot be in Debian, why we have to ship th those packages via an external archive. Um, so, but I think if, if more people start using it and if more people start contributing, we are NX upstream for, we can be NX upstream for Debian because we redistribute. So there can be an effort to get things patched more well uh, while we also have the, the idea of rebasing code but not actually outside upstream Xorg. That wouldn't make sense to me. I think Steve. in order to get this integrated into Xorg, ideally what would happen, I th one, of the, one of the resistances that, uh, that X had historically was against GPL v2 modules even in upstream. We don't have that problem anymore. We have some GPL v2 uh, code in external drivers. Yes. Um, and as long as those external drivers aren't required uh, to run X, then that's yeah. just fine. Okay. So if there's an NX2 video driver, an NX2 input driver, and those are GPLv2, that would be yeah. fine. Uh, um, well, uh, hang on for a sec. Actually, the NX agent, which is the application that, that is used, is a hardware thing. So you have this um, HW and then uh, loads of different hardware drivers, and it's a virtual hardware driver, actually. So I think it might be actually pluggable. Modular. Yeah, exactly. That would cert we could certainly, well, and in fact, if, if there's a hardware driver that's GPLv2, we can have that in the X server source code. That yes. would be just fine. Um, the, the key is any changes that need to be made into the core server to support that hardware, need to, we need to make sure those are MIT licensed. Yes, okay. And we are not the copyright holders only, so we... So you need to rewrite, so if there are patches into the X server core code base to support yes, that. Yes, there are actually. Then we'd have to rewrite those and uh, relicense those. Under yeah, MIT. The, the reason why this scales so well over the network is, over, over slow network connection, is that, um, that, that the no machine people got rid of the round trips in X. So the redrawing of the screen with every action you take. Well, just like RDP or, or, or VNC. Yeah, but RDP and VNC are both capturing methods. So it's like you put a camera on something and you... RD, yeah. RDP has some acceleration for simple rendering operations, and yeah. VNC does not. But like okay. Citrix ICA protocol um, is, is, a, is very similar to what NX did okay. in terms of capturing the rendering commands, like draw a line, draw characters, yeah. and forwarding okay. those, yeah. and then with, with a backup of a general screen capture technique. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have never looked at NX, but I assume it's basically the same as ICA. Mm -hmm except without the horrible serial protocol. Yep. Okay, we're just right before the end. Is there anything that you want to ask? Okay. If you want to get more demonstration of X2Go, I'll be here till tomorrow morning. So just come by, meet me in the bar, and, and I show you more stuff like the broker or something that we have. Okay. Thanks a lot, man.